Well, we're joined now by John Prescott, who was awarded £40,000 in damages after his phone was hacked by the News of the World uh, journalists, and Ian Kirby, who was political editor of the paper under Andy Coulson and Rebecca Brooks. And I'm wondering, um, Ian Kirby, whether now it really does look as if Cameron made a very big mistake indeed in appointing Coulson. Did you think that at the time? No, I think as your report showed, um, they brought him in because he had the skills that the old Etonian clique around David Cameron didn't. And let's look at Labour now. You've got a former political editor of the Daily Mirror. You've got someone else who's come who's worked for the Evening Standard, someone else who's worked for the Times. You know, these people who have... They've a... probably been vetted, though, haven't they? And they probably didn't yeah, really they have been. Anything. Interesting question to answer. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I think the point is that there's a fundamental gap here between those people that are around him and the people that the Conservatives needed to do. And that's why I felt they were slightly weasel words by David Cameron today, in that, um, in that Andy Coulson came in and did a job for him. If, Andy didn't, if, um, if David Cameron didn't ask those questions at the time, it's not Andy's fault. Well, we know that Re Re Rebecca Brooks was very close to the Camerons. Um, do you imagine that she put Coulson on the deck? No, Andy was there already. I mean, they were both very close. I remember going to, um, to number 11 to see Gordon Brown with, uh, with Rebecca and Andy and getting a call from number 10 from Alistair to say, um, what are you doing over there? Why don't you come and see us? We'll, we'll make time in Tony's diary. You know, these people... Andy made a point of knowing everyone. It was a big thing when he took over as an editor. And that is the grubby truth, isn't it, uh, John? Well, the Prescott. grubby truth Not is... Not one, one of you two big parties, Tory and Labour, have clean hands in this matter. Well, you both cosied up to Murdoch and you well, love these guys. I, you, you know, I've been constantly critical about the relationship with Labour leadership with Murdoch, Rebecca Brooks particularly. But look, don't paint this Coulson as if he was Lily White there. I wrote to the Prime Minister the letters here and when he was in opposition saying, do not take this man, he is involved in an investigation into thousands of phone hackings, and do not do it now in opposition, and if you take him into government, he'll go for security clearance, you'll regret it. But he never went through the security clearance. The evidence was there, and Cameron just ignored it. Now, Is that hindsight, Ian Kirby? I wouldn't dispute that, that hindsight is an exact science, but I remember taking Rebecca Brooks to this see you. This ain't hindsight. This is 2009. I remember taking Rebecca Brooks to see you. I remember taking her to see chancellors, foreign secretaries. You, know, during this, you during never this brought period. her to see me. Please don't put that out. I never saw Rebecca Brooks there at all. It was in your you office in the House of Commons. Pardon? She, of course, has been declared not Rebecca very Brooks. much uh, not guilty today on all charges. Yeah. Uh, the issue, and it's not a criminal issue, no. it's just a question of whether you two parties, Tory and De Labour, just got far too no, close to the No, but there's been a, a decision, particularly in regard to Coulson today, that all that I fought for for six years, saying I have been, but they have been involved, that somebody has on phone hacking, involving myself. Really, that has now been confirmed. Let's put that to a side. They've decided in the Criminal Act uh, that he committed a uh, conspiracy to commit a criminal crime, a criminal, criminal act. What I'm more concerned about, whether the industry will change. You know, we've had the Criminal Act, right? We've now had Leveson that looked at the practices that existed in the industry and said it must change. He brought in recommendations. Mm. Parliament unanimously adopted those, mm. put them in a royal charter. Never a fan of a royal charter, but it went into that. The industry's now made clear that it's not going to accept the principles of Leveson. Have set an IPSO up, that's the complaints body, controlled and but financed John by the Prescott industry, with respect. managed with, with them and is not prepared to observe Leveson. With respect, John Prescott, that's the future. We're dealing with the past and what the jury has made of it. And what we have here today laid out, bald for all electors to see, is a situation in which a really effectively corrupt relationship existed between the parties and well, the you'll media. have to give me the evidence of the corrupt Nash. You're throwing that at the Labour Party. Where's that? We've gone to the courts and found out. We'll wait to see what happens. That's well, not our decision here tonight. I, I, You're dragging into the courts. Are you, told proud, us we're not are you to proud, do proud of the relationship which existed? That's not a corrupt relationship. Are you allowed well, to give me some evidence of that? How much did you tell your constituents of what was going on? I told constantly Brown and Blair that I thought the relationship with this woman, you know Rebecca who sent Brown, was bad. Do you know who Pardon? sent commiserations to, to Rebecca Brooks at the end of all this oh, stuff? How the hell no? Oh, uh, Gordon Brown. Well, I don't know. Oh, it might have done. <laughs> and my complaint was that the woman had far too much influence. She did it with Cameron as soon as she came there. When you had influence with her, it meant the Murdoch influence. And nobody can assume that mm. Murdoch's been influenced. I'm on about how you stop yeah. and doing Must it again. Have a word I here. wouldn't dispute that my job as a political editor working for a 
Rupert Murdoch tabloid yep. was to get as close as possible to the most important politicians from every party. I don't think during that time I ever pushed on a closed door. So if there is blame attached on this, it is on all sides. I think looking forward and going back to the comments about, about hacking, I, I think that, that your case and many others show that you know, let's not forget here that a law was broken. My voicemail messages were intercepted. This wasn't just politicians or celebrities who were targeted. Andy's was hacked, Rebecca's was hacked. All done so, by press people. But look, there is a point what now tonight mean? which is not about press regulation, it's about party behavior. Is it no, over? You might is not, this you, sort of stuff over? Fine, you might want to yattle on about that, John. But at the end of the day, I want to see this doesn't happen again. I had six years when everybody said I was balmy trying to say these things. I want to not see it happen, not to have it happen again. But that means you've to got to again, do with politicians Leveson. Politicians have to behave better. Well, the Leveson's about the rules and independent of Leveson. Will it happen even again? Will it happen again? The industry. Assuredly. No, I don't think it will. Look, there's a, there's a broader, probably more effective point that you haven't recognised here is the fact that the hacking conspiracy has cost News International in excess of during their company accounts over a hundred million pounds. I think that's a fairly certain recommendation that it won't happen again. Well, On that they note, were doing Ian it Kirby, so John Prescott, tragically, that's where we must end it, Cathy. And it's